county level. Nimrod, Sam, over to you. Thank you, Vicky, for that. Let's start by setting the stage because the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto, the plan, spoke about constructing 250,000 units per year. These are housing units. And 50% of that was supposed to be in the program of affordable housing. Now, this is what the government has done so far. It has allocated some 35 billion shillings for the housing agenda. This is in total. It includes market. It includes the amount that has been allocated to the Kenya Mortgage Refinancing uh, Company, 5 billion shillings. Affordable housing has been allocated 3.2 billion shillings. The police housing has been allocated 1 billion shillings. Kenya Urban Program has been allocated um, 7.2 billion shillings. Social housing units, 3.3 billion shillings. And of course, the housing levy. The figures that we got from the National Assembly Finance Committee is that from the housing levy of 1.5% for the employer and the employee was going to total to 73 billion shillings. Of course, the housing levy was just um, introduced or implemented starting the month of August, but uh, backdated to July. Waziri Zakri, let's talk about a few things here because the promise is to build 250,000 units every year. It is now one year later. How, how many have you put up? Uh, thank you very much, Sam. Um, you know, housing is one of the basic uh, social and economic rights and that is enshrined in our constitution where every Kenyan has the right to accessible and adequate uh, housing and to reasonable standards of sanitation. Uh, so as the Kenya uh, Kwanzaa government, uh, we have done a research and realized that uh, there is a housing deficit in our country, in urban areas. The demand is 250,000 units, right. but what the market is giving is only 50,000. And as I said earlier, out of that 50,000, only 2% goes to the low income earners. Therefore, the government has a deliberate and intentional uh, program right. through affordable housing uh, program to make sure that we bridge that gap. Okay. Um, what we are doing as a government, we are working closely with the county government because one thing we are providing uh, free is the land component. We know in any housing program, the, the, the value of land takes, depending on where, between okay. 30, 35 percent of the value of the house. So when we are getting this land, either from the national government or from the county government, then that really makes that housing affordable. I want to let you know, Sam, that uh, we have signed 42 uh, MOUs with county government on this affordable housing program. And that shows you how close we are working with the county government because we've realized when we work together, then okay. this program will so, so, so the specific question about the figures, so right. 250,000 units every year, how many so far? Good. Um, we inherited five major programs in the, that were there were initiated in the last government, and they were to give 9,935 units. In this new government, we have launched 13, His Excellency the President has launched 13 projects that will give to the market 38,237 units. We have in the pipeline, soon we are going to launch Another 14, uh, another 14 projects that will give us 32,950 other new units. Mm -hmm. So, as we are speaking. So, so completion dates, do you, do you know? We are, uh, most of them is 18 months. Well, uh, it's 18 months. Okay. Yes. So, that's where we are, and uh, I can assure you we are for, for those 13 projects. And it cuts across the country. Mm -hmm. We have in Homabi, we have uh, in uh, Embu, we have in Kirugoya, we have here in Nairobi, we have in Akuru. We have actually all these programs, uh, all these projects are ongoing. Okay, they are of, of course that is way lower than the promise of 250,000. It's, it's, it's not low because I've talked of 38. Yeah, I've Plus talked 32. about 32. That is and then local. now we are in the pipeline. We have uh, 600, 664,000 units, which okay. we are going to launch before the end of this year. Okay.
Asante. Uh, Mheshimiwa Moses Kuria katika hili ili swali la nyumba za bei nafu. Mm -hmm. Tatizo kubwa la serikali kujieleza ni kwa yule ambaye atakaye faidi. Paka sasa hivi mkenya hajaweza kufahamu haswa yule ambaye anatozwa kwa lazima kupitia mshahara wake ambaye pengine ana nyumba haitaji nyumba. Paka sasa hivi eh, kuna wakenya ambao wanatatizika kuelewa kwa nini walazimishwe katika mpango huo nyumba za bei nafu. Wa kufaidika na hilo ni swali mzuri sana ni mrotabu. Kwanza mimi hata simuangazii huyo mwenye kukatwa hiyo pesa. Katika nyumba moja tunapata nafasi za kazi takriban ngapi tano? Yeah, 3 uh, to 5. 3 to 5. Yes. Hata tusisome hapo katika direct. direct jobs. Indirect is 5 to 8. 5 to 8. Yes. So katika hizi nyumba abo waziri amesema that 8000 multiply by 5. Tuko na watu 1200 kwa wakati huu wanafanya kazi hapo. Hao ni watu 1200 wakekuwa katika ulevi, katika madawa ya kulevia, wamekaa katika e, juu ya mawe katika shopping center na hii inchi lazima tujue ya kwamba hata kama wewe umeshiba na huu mwenzako ako katika hapo e, kwa maduka amekaa hapo hata wewe mm -hmm. hauko pahali pazuri kwa hivyo tuangazie tusiangazie tu huo mtu kama anahitaji ama hahitaji wakati waziri amesema kumaliza kwa mwaka huu Umesema ngapi waziri? Mia sita? Mia sita sitini. Sitini. Watu karibu milioni tatu jameni. Karibu milioni tatu. Hii Kenya hii, tuko na, nita kufanyia hesabu. Tuko na watu milioni moja, ambao wame, wameajiriwa na serikali. Kama mimi na Zakari. Kuna watu wengine milioni bili, ambao wameajiriwa kwa sekta ya binafsi, formal sector, ambao wanafaa tai, kama nimro tabu na samgituko. Milioni mbili. So, nyinyi watai kwa sekta ya kibinafsi na sisi watai katika sekta ya serikali tuko milioni tatu. Yeah. Lakini wale wengine ambao hawajui hata waamkie wa, wa wapi yeah. ni watu milioni 16. Yeah. Na lazima tujiulize mpaka lini ubinafsi wetu okay. kujipenda kwa Moses Kuria na Sam Gituku utaendelea kuadhiri watu wengine milioni 16 ambao hawana matumaini. Kwa hivyo tu wacha sisi milioni 3 hii tusema ya kuwa jameni sio ati sisi tulela tukamhonga Mungu hata wao wengine walizaliwa na hawana fine. makosa. That's that's fine was there because we already be uh, ahead of that. That is already behind us. So how much did you collect in the month of August was there Zachary? And what are you doing to ring fence? Because the act talks about the money will only be used for the housing program, right. nothing else. Right. Um, so far, we have uh, combined the month of uh, July and August. Mm -hmm. We have a combined uh, amount of 5.6 billion. Uh, of course, KRA is the collecting agent, and that money. So far, we are we are um, we are we are under we are we are coming up with regulations. Uh, that will help in administering this fund okay. and soon we'll be uh, calling the public to give their views on okay. how best they feel the, the fund um, will be managed. So one thing you can be assured of, that money will go for the intended purpose. Right. So through these regulations, we are going to make sure that the fund is uh, well managed. Okay. Uh, maybe also to add on what my colleague here was saying, 60% of Kenyans living in urban areas live in informal settlements, live in uh, slums. Mm. And uh, the way they live, one, one person there when he was trying to explain, uh, and I think it was Kibra, he says he lives in a one room where he pays 3,500. Out of that 3,500, I want you to put, he also buys water and buys water expensively, uh, pays for electricity expensively. Some of them even pays for security because they are not assured of it. And worse still, they pay to go to toilet. Okay. So when you combine all that, the amount could be way far by above the 3.5, I mean the 3,500. You could right. find this person is paying 600, I mean 6,000. But this program of affordable housing, that amount that this person pays could be paid on a long term mm -hmm. 
mm. but that person owns through the TPS, the, the tenants purchase scheme. So what we are trying to address, and some and Nimrod let's all agree that the future is urban. Mm. So if we don't mitigate that future now, then we'll have a problem. Okay. That's yes. why the Thank government you, is real keen to yes. make sure that we provide decent houses to our kids. All, all right, Rosalie, thank you for that. And of course, there are many questions that uh, the experts would want to raise. Mm -hmm. That's why we cross over to the expert studio with Ayub. Thanks, Sam. Thank, thanks, Nimrod. And uh, beginning with you, Professor Alfred Omenya, of course, as um, a professional urban planner, listening to the submissions by the Lands Cabinet Secretary, he only talked to a number of uh, 70, 38, one batch, and 32 the other. He talked about the long-term plan of more than 600,000. Was that the plan? And looking forward, will the numbers that the government had promised be delivered on time? No, thank you very much, um, uh, Ayub. I think um, the, we've ventilated quite a bit on this housing uh, uh, issue and the housing problem and the housing challenge. Um, yes, of course, I'm um, a good taxpayer, and uh, you know uh, my my own salary has been deducted. It has reduced significantly uh, as I as I contribute to this housing tax amongst others. Um, the point where we are now, we've sort of given up on, um, on uh, giving government any advisory of how to deal with the housing problem. And we've accepted that let government build houses, whether they're ne necessary or not, whether they're solving a problem or not, let them proceed to build housing. Uh, is a situation where you're saying, there's a student who could easily have d gotten 80%, but uh, now we're at a point where we're saying, L let the student pass, even if he's at 40%. So let them build houses anyway. So the point I'm trying to highlight here, and we've said that time without number, actually, that the real serious housing problem we have in this country, if you are to ask yourself, what is the housing problem? It is the problem of the homeless. It is a problem of those who are living in inadequate housing, in slums and in formal settlements. It is not a problem of um, the, the lower class or even the middle, middle income. It is not the problem of home ownership. That is a secondary problem. Uh, if, if we're to look at uh, the ethos of our constitution and the spirit, it is not, uh, uh, the, the, our biggest priority is really not uh, the working class. Those people don't live in caves. They live in homes. It is people living in situations worse than animals in this country that you know, should actually be targeted. And, and, and secondly, what you're saying now, all of us are being taxed uniformly to solve the housing problem. From where I sit, I would love to see most of this money going to that card of people. But as it were, mm -hmm. um, you can see what, what is going to this uh, group of people is, uh, is three billion. And I've said it again, and I'll repeat it over and over and over again on air, that the housing problem is not about houses. Kenyans are living in housing situations. We've done thousands of studies that show quite clearly that you give people security of tenure, you give them a title, they build houses that you improve infrastructure, the build houses. So the idea that government builds houses is a stupid idea ab initio. And I'll say that as professor of architecture and professor of housing. It is stupid. Nobody d does that anywhere on earth, despite the fact that I've given up that my money will be used on a stupid idea. Uh, this idea remains stupid. And I'll keep telling government, as long as I live in this country, that that idea is dumb. We can improve Kenyan housing situation in a massive way by enabling private sector to deliver housing. We can improve Kenya's housing situation in a huge way by putting infrastructure. We, we can improve Kenya's housing situation in a big way by providing social am amenities, by providing water, by providing all those basic things. This whole idea that government can build houses is stupid. Number two, housing again is a devolved okay. function. We never envisaged that the national government would go and work with fundies and give us houses. Uh, this, again, is a dumb idea. Uh, so anyway, uh, like, like I'm saying, we've already given up. Let government build whichever houses they want to build, right. whether it, uh, they're relevant or not, uh, because this government is incorrigible. 
they, they already decided what they, they wanted to do. Uh, they used parliament and other mechanisms to coerce us uh, to do the payment. Now is the law, I will pay. But actually, the government housing policy is done. Thank you. Yes, on the money, On housing, I hope. Yes. Um, I may not have the luxury to use the kind of words Professor is using, but I want to say that we, there is no better way of judging the future and the present than by the past. And also, economists are in perspectives and comparisons. If you look at economists, for example, like Singapore, I will not want to use the word Professor is using, but I don't think Lee Kuan Yew was in that state. Uh, that professor alluded to because they came up with this kind of a program now the house ownership rate in singapore is over 93 percent however but, but how, how, how do you compare hold on in your on just on, on time allocations here how do you compare singapore and kenya which is uh, slightly i mean small in terms of its demography in terms yeah. of its size mm -hmm. and a country that uh, largely has fewer less people mm -hmm. than kenya i mean in terms of uh, the ratio is what i'm talking about I compare because the route that they went through is actually the same route. If you check actually what they did, they introduced the kind of levy which was going to some form of our equivalent NSSF, which actually uh, ended up acting as an incentive uh, to the industry of housing. And therefore, there is a lot of comparison to, drive, uh, to derive from. Also, in terms of what we, they were then, in comparison to us, we were more or less the same size. And by the way, uh, my brother Ayub, Economically, parameters we look at are not in terms of size of geography. The parameters we look at most likely are in terms of per capita. So that whatever the size of the place, whether it is incomes, whether it is wealth, you look at in terms of per capita, per person. Therefore, I believe this is a very good idea. And I was at the point of making a point right. that economies are synergetic in nature. When you look, for example, in terms of housing, it is not just the we are not looking at just the person owning a house. We are looking at other synergies mm -hmm. that are created around there. But also in that respect, and allow me now this to open up beyond housing, so that I give these points broadly, okay. referencing on all the other areas that we've been talking about, in terms of taxation, in terms of productivity, in terms of hasrafad, in terms of all this. And I want to say that we are looking not just as a consumer, when you talk about the cost of living, and that is why I'm saying I'm talking holistically, because these points are cutting across, you are not just looking as a consumer, the consumer. It is important that we look at the consumer who is also the producer. And that is why when you talk about, for example, UNGA, because all these things are interrelated in okay. the cost of living, you are not just looking at how much money you go to the supermarket and buy UGA. The same consumer must also be made the, the producer. And that is why we have all these robust plans. Housing plan is making many Kenyans mm -hmm. who are generally uh, only consumers to also be producers. And that is why I made the first point that prices generally, inflation generally is upward. Because okay. as you empower many people to have more incomes, okay. definitely they demand more. When they demand more, because economies are synergetic, even if this segment of an economy grows, Thank you. it percolates to the other. But allow me also. Oh, oh, it's still on the same housing because of time, okay. To just keep you on track, we are talking about the housing element. We have uh, uh, exhausted the other topics I've talked about on, on the cost of living generally. So just to finish up on the question on the housing aspect. I was uh, uh, requesting that as I make that point because they are all interrelated, that I talk about some of the fundamentals we are looking at. Because we are looking at the housing in the context of the budget. Thank you. Remember, this issue came up more because it was, there, was a, uh, there was a finance bill, which is now an act. And now, in retrospect, in terms of all of them, there are some fundamentals we are, we are doing, which Kenyans have a right to know. One, as government, we are reducing on recurrent expenditure okay, as yeah. a share of the entire. OK, hold on, hold on, hold on, because of time, I have to cut you short. And, and largely, this was on. Uh, the, the housing question, and uh, allow me now to get the uh, account of uh, um, Director Murede. Given what you have heard from the CS and, and the Chair of the Budgets and Budget and Appropriations Committee, Honorable Director Murede, what's your account, and, and largely that of the opposition, towards this course by the government? Uh, thank you, Ayub. On the question of comparisons, if we must compare ourselves with Singapore, 
uh, then we should remember that uh, a minister of industry in Singapore, uh, Mr. Cheng Wan, actually committed suicide when he was found uh, or when he was accused of corruption. So we should compare ourselves uh, um, and emulate Singapore in all the ways in which Singapore used to become a developed country. The housing program has been criticized because the housing levy is seen not to be, to, to be equitable. And, and this point has been canvassed by the professor. I, I only remind the audience that even those who may not be in need of housing have to contribute to this mandatory levy. And therefore, from a taxation point of view, it is seen not to be equitable. Uh, the, this housing program has also been criticized on the question, again, Professor has spent some time on it, are you solving the actual problem? Mm -hmm. uh, four problems that bedevil the housing market in Kenya. The first one is the cost of materials of building, that we are talking about affordable housing, and we are having to uh, give tax incentives in order to bring down uh, the cost of those particular houses, whereas we should be solving the problem, why are build the cost of building materials so high, and what could we do more generally? Uh, secondly, the cost of land. And the cost of land is also related to urban infrastructure. Take the case of Nairobi. The idea of Nairobi Metropolitan was to create infrastructure so that somebody can live as far down as Kajiado or perhaps Naivasha and still be able to work within uh, uh, Nairobi city. And that is only possible if you have enabled urban infrastructure to develop, and that brings down the cost of land at the very center okay. where we are all trying to squeeze. So these things okay. are the things that government ought to be solving more generally. If you think about the Thank cost you. of mortgages, um, affordability right. is a function of interest rates. Thank you. Again, I take you back, or just uh, uh, 10 seconds, I take Thank you, you back to this question. Okay. If government is paying 17.5% okay. right. for borrowing as it did today, mm -hmm. what will you pay for your mortgage? Th That's you. the problem we should be solving. L uh, let's now finish up with Dr. Joy Kiro and, and briefly your account of all this concept by the government that all of us will agree on. Number one, the government is facing a fiscal crisis. Number two, the government is still undergoing bureaucratic inefficiencies just because of the way government functions. You cannot, you cannot afford bureaucracies and inefficiencies. And number three, we are faced with weak institutional governance. Now, these are things, I'm not saying that they're not doing anything about. They may be working to rectify these things or to address some of these issues, but this is where we are. Now, if that is where we are, the housing, the housing case is a clear business case because there's housing deficit, there is demand, and therefore there's a lot of potential for the private sector to go into it and make money and make profits. Okay. So how does the government need to get involved? By providing incentives. And these incentives do not have to be direct monies to this sector. It, it takes money to approve uh, building constructions. Do something about that. Okay. It, 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 we need infrastructure to do this thing. Do something about that. The, there are issues of stamp duty. Do something about that. So in other words, let the private sector drive the housing business as a clear business okay. case. Thank you. And the issue of jobs that you're saying is the biggest outcome out of this will still be created. Okay. Thank you. So, okay, allow me now to hand you back to Sam Gitoku and Nemro Tabu who are at the Cabinet Studio, and allow me to thank my guests here. Professor Alfredo Menya is an urban planner by profession, also commentator on social political affairs. He was also joined on the set by the Keharu Lomeka Didi Nyoro, who as well is the chairperson of the Budget and Appropriations Committee of the National Assembly, as well as Indirecto Moredi, who represented the opposition as Emilio Omoja, one Kenya coalition party and ex-governor like Ipia County and Dr. Jen Ki Je Joy Kiro, who is an economist from the University of Nairobi. Back to you, Sam and Nimrod at the Cabinet Studio. All right, thank you so much, Ayub. And I wanted to tie up matters here, starting with you, Waziri Njeru, because various concerns have come from that studio, especially on why you should let the private sector be the one to deal with this. But I want to ask you a specific question. So you're collecting about 73 billion shillings every year. Is that sufficient to, to build already the more than 80,000 units that uh, are, you say are already in progress, but also expecting another 664,000 uh, projects to be, or the units uh, to be commissioned in the coming months? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Sam. One thing we should note is that uh, 
all these projects are not starting at the same time. So they will be starting at different stages. So that, and since we have monthly levy coming in, okay. it will be so easy for us to make sure that uh, we accomplish that. That is a study we've done. And um, so, so 73 billion shillings in a year is sufficient to build how many, how many units? Well, um, w our target is 200,000 units per year because already the market is giving 50,000. Okay. So with that money, we'll be able, and, and one thing I want you to note is that they are not asking that money to, uh, at the same time. We'll be paying, we'll be paying. No, I, I get that. I'm just yes. wondering if yes. it's not sufficient, where do you get the balance from? Capitalizing. Because the target is 200,000 units, as you said. Yes, C capitalizing? Yes. Yes? What is that? Uh, maybe we'll... <laughs> I will explain. Eh? Um, the whole concept of the housing fund, and I'm, I'm hearing people say that, uh, you know, let me just digress a bit, Sam, with your permission. No, please. We are tying matters here. No. Just a you know, you know, capitalization. Kenya spends, Kenya spends 650 billion shillings every year on education <laughs> to, pro, to, to, to educate buffoons like that, Professor Omenya. Please, don't call who, me. Who, he, he called us stupid. We can't use He that called our program that. stupid, and he's was a buffoon. It, I wonder why we invest in education. But anyway, let me get back to this point. This money that we're supposed to put in here is supposed to um, get into the capital market ultimately. We do something called leveraging, and we get X times more money from the private sector. And by the way, Sam, for the last 60 years of independence, this country has produced only 50,000 mortgages, 50,000 from that private sector. So there was need to have some intervention. And we're not saying we crowd out the private sector yep. from this housing thing. But the 73 billion, which CS0 is supposed to collect out there, is supposed to go to the capital market, to the financial system, and multiply six times more. Can you imagine if 73 billion is able to leverage 10 times and we get 700 billion? Was there, I don't have a problem with that. The question is very specific. So you collect 73 billion shillings in 12 months. And then you turn it around to the private sector hold on. 10 times. At the same time, you're building houses. The target is to build 200,000, according to CS Jero. So when do you multiply? When do you build? How much are you building in a year at how much? Let me, let me say this. Today, these houses are not being built by government, mm -hmm. even today. They are being built by private sector. Okay. But the money that Jero is collecting is for selling the private sector person. If you build this house, you can sell to the market. In the likely event mm -hmm. that the market is not undertaking it, then CS Jero undertakes it yeah, to offtake from that. But you see now, for every one shilling that uh, Jero uh, you know, offtakes, 10 Nine others can be taken by me and you in the, in the private market. Mwishimiwa. Maybe I think it's too complicated Mwishimiwa. for you. Mwishimiwa, 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 Asante Sana. Asante Kale Vile, Mwishimiwa, uh, Waziri, Zakari, Njeru, Asante Sana. Mawaziri walukua pamoja nasi ya Pawawali, Susan Nakumencha Wafula, alikuwa pamoja nasi, na Vile Vile, Waziri, Simon Cholugui. Tunasema Asante kwa mchango enu. Njia kwa boma yangu, kwa hili wanainchi waweze kujua. Kwa sekundi. Uh, tafadhali kwa sekundi moja. No. If you, uh, for you to start saving on affordable housing, you go through the Bomayangu portal, uh, through USSD star 832 hash, then you pick uh, the scheme, the typology of the house you want, and the place where you want, and immediately you start saving. So it's good for 90 to know that. Na tupatana siku ya jumatatu, county Arakipia, to kilounge industrial park Arakipia, na tutakuwa live kwa Lulinga Citizen, diwa kenya wa jineo kweli, siyo huu. Asante sala waziri, shukura and sam. All right, um, waziri, don't leave yet. We want to cross over to uh, Jeff and Lulu, the in the morning entry studio to take us home. Over to you. And Vicky. <laughs> That's right. Um, this is the end yeah. of the big conversation. My first one, it was absolutely amazing. But five hours, four topics we covered. Affordable housing, the cost of living, access to credit, which, of course, was the Hustler Fund, right. and health. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, Vicky, that's what the big conversation is all about. It's all about some agree, some disagree. And in the end, we agree to disagree. Kabisa, we agree to disagree. Mtazamaji, kama ulivuona kwamba tumeko sana, tumepatana, tumeulizana, tukajibizana, na kila kitu kilikuwa shwari. Kama memuona waziri pia mecheka. Ni kwamba sote tumelewana kwa hivisasi. Atutendelea kuungea, siyo? Kabisa.
There's so many people would like to thank folks. This has been a great production, a huge production. There's a great team behind this. I'd like to start the uh, shareholder room, sh shareholder studio. Thanks so much, guys. Cabinet room, uh, the uh, Monanchi studio, the expert studio, the opinion poll studio, and everyone from the Charter Hall to Kibra to Nyamira to uh, Garissa to Nyeri. And let's not forget our Ndudi gang. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. On the wrong guy and the Makasi Roos. And of course, the management, the producers, the directors, the cameramen, the sound men, everybody, and the management. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for being a part of this. And thank you for joining us on The Big Conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay,